Hello everybody and welcome to part 3 of section 4 which is all about URL lib and using it to access the internet. In this video we're going to be talking about headers. So headers are what you send in every time you access a website. So when you go to make a request to a server uh, or you visit a website which is a request to a server what happens is you send in what's called a header and the header contains all kinds of information on you like your browser where are you like your IP address this sort of thing it also says well it just gives a whole bunch of information one of the major things is what's known as the user agent and the user agent notifies the server who you are and when you use URL lib when you visit a website with URL lib, your header in your user agent notifies the server that, hey, my name is Python URL lib, and I'm here to read some data. Now, the problem is a lot of websites don't care about people using machines to visit them. That's not their interest. They want humans on their websites because human users are, you know, monetizable, so to speak, and machines really are not. So a lot of websites are going to shut out machines just because there's no point and they cause excess load. So people like to do this. Now, of course, another reason why people might have this, and Google is one of them, is they offer an API. An API is an application programmer interface. And what it does is it allows programs to access the service in a more efficient method for programs. So in, a, in, a, in the next video, we're going to be talking about XML, which is a markup language basically created to be read both by humans and machines. But HTML is actually mainly, the whole point of HTML is to make stuff pretty for humans to read, not really for machines. And so it's a lot more data, actually. Whereas what places like Google want to do is serve you with the most minimal data, the data you are interested in. And so they offer an API. So keep that in mind. If you find yourself on a website that is shutting you out for some reason, see if they have an API that's doing what you're trying to do. Since this is a tutorial on URL lib, and this is a problem that happens, especially when you're trying to parse a lot of websites, I still want to show this method. But just keep in mind that if you're going to take what I'm showing you now to search on Google, just understand that it's really not necessary. <laughs> yeah, Google has an API. So anyway, with that, let's go ahead and move on. So what we need to do is before we make the request, basically when you make a request, remember how we had URL, we could add data. These are args. So remember we were talking about object-oriented programming? And when you have a class, you have what? You have uh, self, args, and then you have uh, quargs, right? Keyword arguments. So first you had args, and so request is an argument. Data, when we were doing it, was an argument. But then we can add another thing that is a keyword argument, and that would be headers equals headers, okay? So this is a keyword argument, and again, this is kind of why, oops, I'm sorry, I'm putting this in the wrong location. We don't want it in here, we want it in under request. I wasn't looking at the uh, proper line here. Anyway, and you know this is a class because of the capital R, okay, so even more information. So anyway, you've got your argument here, and then you've got your keyword argument here. So my point was that this is kind of why you want to learn object-oriented programming, because you'll understand how this, how you know, how you can even place data in here and why that works. So anyways, moving along, we've got headers equals headers. Now the problem is we haven't actually defined headers. So to define headers, what we're going to want to do is we're going to say headers equals, and like I was saying before, generally keyword arguments are going to be dictionaries. It's just the way it is. So you've, <laughs> headers is going to be a dictionary. Now the next thing we're going to say is headers, and then we're going to define a new element in this dictionary, and we're going to call it user das agent. And user agent is going to equal basically a browser, like what we want the browser to be. Now we can try to do something like this. We could maybe make it as simple as this, Mozilla and then 5.0. Okay, we're gonna try that, but it's unlikely that'll work. And in fact, let's add one more thing. Let's say we're on uh, Linux. We're gonna say X11 semicolon Linux 
And then we'll give the processor i686. Awesome. So we're going to try to get away with just doing that. And we make the request, we say what our headers are, we get the response, everything's all happy. Let's just try that and see what we get. There we go. Okay, so we actually got data off of that. And we're basically telling them we're using Mozilla and we're, our operating system is Linux and this is our processor, as if they need to know our processor, but they think they do. So anyways, we give it to them. So anyway, there you go. You've got your response now, and that's actually quite a large response. Before, if you recall, and actually there's even our ad. I just scrolled past it, but I saw it. If you recall, I was getting an ad for Linda, and uh, I just saw Linda's ad in there. for Because, again, we're searching Python programming tutorials, so, of course, we get some stuff in there. Now, and in fact, what we can do is get the full Python programming tutorials, and we'll make that search over here, and let me pull this over. Okay. So now let's just view the source here, and let's see, we wanted beginner's guide. Uh, so let's type in that, beginners, beginners, I'm not even finding that in the source, let's see. Let's search for, search maybe python.org, let's see if we can find that link, python.org, no. Okay, so part of the problem is what Google is doing to us is they're going to like hash this stuff up for you, so... I guess we'll probably hold off on that. Let's see if we can get at least the description though. The tutorials. No, I still can't even get that. I can't believe it. Yeah, so Google is, is even is trying really hard to stop people from <laughs> parsing their search. Again, Google has a search API. But I wonder if I can maybe find it in here. Let's say beginners. Let's see if we can find beginners here. Okay, so we were at least able to find it here. So for example, here is that link to that beginner's guide, okay, to programming. So we could parse things out, like we could parse out A tags and things like that, or like titles and stuff like that. We could start parsing things out. Now, we will get to parsing out individual items like that. But the first thing I want us to go ahead and cover is RSS feeds. So a lot of times the first step to parsing data is actually figuring out how are we gonna get that data? So where are we going to go to find URLs to visit? So we can enter them manually, but for example, what if you were trying to track the news and uh, you know you have no way of knowing what's new in the news? Well, it turns out that people offer what's called these RSS feeds, which stands for really simple syndication. And RSS feeds are almost always in XML, which is a markup language that, like I was saying before, is, is basically written to be extremely simplistic and you can read it as a human or as a machine. So it makes a whole lot of sense to do that. So in the next few tutorials, we're going to be covering how to at least pull apart XML, basically how do we get to these documents, what's their structure, how do we get elements, and all of that. So anyways, that's what you guys have to look forward to, so stay tuned for that.